Welcome to the 88th Theoretical Physics Colloquium by Professor Massimo D'Allier from the University of Pisa in Italy. He uh, received his PhD in 1998 from the University of Pisa. Uh, afterwards, he had several uh, postdoc position, associate researcher position at the University of Cyprus, uh, Zurich Polytechnic University, University of Pisa until 2020. And then he got his first faculty position as an assistant professor at the University of Genoa. Uh, since 2011 till 2000, uh, 2019, uh, he was an associate professor at the University of Pisa, and since 2019, he is a full professor there. Um, over the years, he uh, was an active member of the community. He actually uh, prepared a lot of uh, PhD students, uh, 13 PhD theses, 44 master theses, and his research interests include uh, lattice QCD, QCD in strong magnetic field, uh, um, general uh, theory of uh, quantum chromodynamics and many other things. And today he will be talking about uh, the QCD phase diagram in magnetic field. And with that, I'll give uh, the microphone to Marcin. Hey, thank you very much for uh, the invitation to this uh, the colloquium. Uh, in theoretical physics and uh, also for the introduction. Uh, so I will be talking about the uh, QCD phase diagram in the magnetic field. Let me start with an introduction to the uh, to the subject. So this is the, the standard QCD phase diagram. The phase diagram where one considers just uh, temperature and uh, baryon chemical potential. Um, as you know, uh, the study of the phase diagram involves uh, mostly non-perturbative features of uh, quantum chromodynamics. And so the uh, natural investigation tool is uh, lattice QCD. So the numerical uh, Monte Carlo simulation of QCD discretized uh, on a lattice. Uh, but uh, most of the standard phase diagram uh, is not available, uh, cannot be studied by uh, lattice QCD simulations because of the infamous same problem, which one uh, has at finite baryon chemical potential. Uh, so let me briefly uh, remind you the, the main features of the phase diagram. We know uh, most uh, of the QCD phase structure at zero baryon chemical potential or uh, for small baryon chemical potential, we know that there is uh, a crossover where one uh, crosses from a confined phase at low temperature to a, a the confined phase where chiral symmetry is resolved at a temperature uh, uh, around uh, 150 MeV. And we know that there is no real phase transition uh, there. I mean, just a very uh, sharp but analytic uh, change uh, of, uh, the, of the main features of the theory and of uh, the, the properties of strongly interacting matter. Now, one uh, important point is whether this crossover turns uh, into a real phase transition uh, at uh, uh, some critical endpoint in, in the plane. And uh, let me say that this is one of the main still missing result, which is uh, whose study is hindered by uh, the presence of the same problem. We have many effective models predicting this uh, critical endpoint, and uh, for the same reason, large part of the uh, of the phase diagram, which concerns uh, in, uh, important phenomenological contexts like the equation of state of neutron stars, is not accessible by uh, lattice QCD simulations. Now, uh, there are several possible extensions of the phase diagram where one considers uh, other possible parameters characterizing the strongly interacting medium. Uh, here, I, I put another uh, uh, possible direction involving uh, many parameters, which can be the, the values of the quark masses or possible uh, background fields. And uh, in this uh, colloquium, I will be uh, uh, talking about uh, the presence of a magnetic background field. This is uh, interesting, uh, both from a theoretical point of view, but it is also of great phenomenological relevance. And of course, the, the questions are uh, uh, the same that uh, you may have in the standard QCD phase diagram. So uh, how the uh, main uh, non-perturbative features 
uh, of QCD, like confinement, carosymmetry breaking, and other things change uh, as you uh, tune these other parameters, so uh, as you tune a, a magnetic background field, and uh, uh, whether you can cross to other uh, possible phases uh, and other uh, issues like that. So uh, as I will discuss now in, uh, in the next slide, this is also not only important from a theoretical point of view, but it is also important from a phenomenological point of view. So uh, in principle, quarks are subject to electroweak interactions, which induce just small corrections to strong interaction dynamics. Anyway, uh, we expect exceptions to this statement when uh, uh, the strength of the background field is quite strong and uh, when it, it is uh, of the same, uh, the same scale uh, of strong interactions. So when the magnetic field becomes comparable to the QCD scale. There are several uh, contexts where this uh, takes place. For instance, uh, large magnetic fields are expected in a, a class of neutron stars, which are known as uh, magnetars. We know that the magnetic field is of the order of 10 to the 10 Tesla, which is uh, not close to the QCD uh, scale, to the strong interaction scale. But actually, this is the value that uh, is expected on the surface of such stars. And the value inside the stars is actually unknown. Uh, large magnetic fields uh, may have been produced at the cosmological uh, electroweak transition uh, of the order of 10 to the 16 Tesla, which is uh, much larger than the, the strong interaction scale. Uh, and this case actually is relevant to what I will uh, show you. And finally, uh, strong magnetic fields can be produced in non-central AI ion collisions where uh, we may reach magnetic field up to 10 to the 15 uh, Tesla. Now, in this case, there are phenomenological uh, phenomena expected, like the uh, well-known chiral magnetic effect. So let me now illustrate briefly uh, what are the main phenomena which are expected, and in particular, those that are relevant to my uh, seminar. Uh, I will consider in my seminar, uh, first of all, the effects on the QCD vacuum structure. Now, there are two main questions. Of course, the vacuum of QCD is characterized by, uh, by color confinement and uh, by the, the presence of a mass gap, so by the presence of global states, uh, and also by uh, chiral symmetry breaking. So what are the effects expected on these two phenomena? Well, the effects on chiral symmetry breaking uh, have been predicted since long. Uh, I refer to this uh, recent, quite recent review, but uh, actually in, um, the effects are known since uh, decades. Um, and the, the predicted effect is that chiral symmetry breaking is enhanced by the presence of a background magnetic field. This phenomenon is known as uh, uh, magnetic catalysis. Now, the effects on the color confinement and glue dynamics uh, are less obvious because the gluons are not directly coupled to the uh, electromagnetic fields. They are only coupled through uh, quark loops. But there is a, a general expectation. I mean, there are several uh, uh, predictions coming from effective models of strong interactions, also in this case. There is one general expectation, which I think is uh, quite relevant to what I will uh, show you later. And the expectation is uh, that the confinement scale, uh, so it has talk of lambda QCD, is expected to be uh, smaller in the presence of a, a magnetic field at the scale uh, of strong interactions. So the next question is, of course, what are the effects on the QCD phase diagram? So what is the, the fate of uh, the crossover temperature and of the nature of the transition? Uh, now, if one considers these two effects, the, the answer can be not so clear. I mean, uh, from the point of view of magnetic catalysis, we expect that the uh, critical temperature should uh, increase because uh, magnetic field enhances current symmetry breaking, so it would uh, uh, contribute to keeping you in the uh, phase where current symmetry is broken. From the point of view of confinement dynamics, since the uh, confinement scale is lowered, 
you may expect that maybe the uh, it is easier to deconfine when you increase the temperature so that the deconfinement temperature decreases uh, so the lattice qcd is the ideal tool to make an operative investigation of such issues and indeed uh, the study of qcd plus uh, qed uh, first of all, to study the electromagnetic properties of hadrons uh, uh, goes back to the early days of lattice QCD. And uh, in the recent years... Uh, question, uh, question. Lattice QCD, right? Yeah. Okay, make sure. Thank you. Can, you have, can I go on? Yes, please continue. Okay. So recent years, I've seen an increasing activity on uh, this hadron that I will uh, review. So let me start with a, a brief introduction to lattice QCD to, uh, to review some concepts that are useful in the following. Um, so when we want to study QCD uh, on a lattice, uh, the, um, the most elegant uh, regularization that we know is the gauge invariant regularization proposed by uh, Kenneth Wilson in the 70s. Uh, in this case, the gauge variables are represented by the elementary parallel transports connecting neck boring sites of the lattice, uh, while fermion fields live on the, the lattice sides. Uh, so the, the theory is constructed in terms of uh, link variables, which are uh, uh, SU3 matrices. And uh, the next step is to discretize both the pure gauge term of the option, and this is uh, uh, done usually in the most elementary way in terms of the uh, plaquette operator, so an elementary loop going around the a plaquette uh, elementary square of the lattice, which contains the information about the, um, the, the chromomagnetic or the, the non abelian uh, gauge flux uh, through the plaquette. And then also the fermion action can be discretized um, and uh, it keeps being a, a bilinear uh, uh, form in the fermion fields. Uh, so, uh, once you have done that, you can uh, uh, formulate the thermal partition function of QCD in terms of an Euclidean uh, path integral. An Euclidean path integral where the, uh, the contributions uh, from uh, uh, dynamical fermions is encoded in the fermion determinant because you can uh, analytically integrate over the, uh, the, the fermion fields. And the, the, the physical temperature is related to the compactified Euclidean time direction. So the temperature is uh, the inverse of the uh, compactified uh, time. Uh, and it, it is given uh, as a function of the number of sites in the temporal direction and of the lattice spacing. So it is uh, uh, expressed in this, uh, in this way. Now, uh, as long as this, uh, uh, this term uh, appearing in the path integral is uh, positive, it can be interpreted as a probability distribution function over the gauge link uh, configurations. So you can uh, think of performing a Monte Carlo simulations to actually compute this integral and obtain uh, information about the several expectation values which can be uh, of physical uh, relevance. And uh, um, now, uh, I will not go into details, of course, but the most challenging part uh, from a numerical point of view is to take into account the fermion determinant because uh, it is a non local, uh, highly non local term. Now, the next step, of course, is uh, uh, taking the continuum limit of the quantities that you, that you measure. And the continuum limit, uh, this is a gift from asymptotic freedom, can be taken. I mean, the lattice spacing can be sent to zero by simply taking the, the limit of the uh, uh, bare coupling going to zero. Uh, now, let me uh, say also a few words on how the uh, magnetic background field is introduced in this context. Now, of course, uh, uh, when we consider, uh, um, we, we consider a static, uh, uh, uniform, and uh, uh, an external field. Uh, so the electromagnetic field uh, is not part of the um, dynamics, does not have uh, a dynamics on its own. It is considered as an, just an external field. But nevertheless, it modifies the covariant derivative as follows. I mean, the covariant derivative acting on quarks uh, is modified by the addition of the uh, an abelian field, uh, which depends on the quark charge. Uh, so it is different for the different uh, flavors. 
when you go to the lattice formulations, the covariant derivative is uh, written uh, in terms of the gauge link variables. And the introduction of the magnetic field uh, turns out to be uh, implemented uh, as the uh, addition of these uh, U1 uh, variables to the standard uh, SU2 uh, gauge link variables. So you simply um, add U1 phases to the gauge link variables, uh, uh, which depend on the strength of the magnetic field, and that's how you change the, the theory. And these variables are not changed during the Monte Carlo. I mean, they are uh, fixed because the magnetic field is uh, an external field. Now, uh, the, the fact is that when uh, you just introduce a magnetic field, things are different for an electric field. But if you are uh, keep with uh, just a magnetic field, the thermal determinant is still uh, positive. Uh, so that Monte Carlo simulations are still perfectly feasible and the theory can be explored uh, as usual. So there are, however, some constraints that you should uh, consider. Uh, such constraints regards both the uh, infrared and the ultraviolet uh, uh, features of the theory. Now, regarding the uh, infrared limitations, uh, one should consider that usually numerical simulations are performed on a periodic lattice. Uh, I mean, you have uh, periodic boundary conditions, not only in the Euclidean time direction, but also in the uh, spatial directions, uh, because that is a, a better approximation of uh, an infinite volume. So uh, in such conditions, uh, if you uh, want, if you pretend to have a, a uniform magnetic field, uh, pointing one direction, uh, the magnetic field must be uh, quantized because the magnetic flux through the lattice torus uh, must be a, an integer multiple of, uh, uh, of 2 pi. Uh, this is like the Dirac quantization of the, uh, the magnetic charge of, uh, of magnetic monopoles is the same uh, concept. So uh, turning into uh, lattice uh, units, that means that uh, uh, the quark charge ties the magnetic field must be an integer number, this uh, uh, B here, which is an integer, uh, times 2 pi divided by the area of the lattice. Uh, so you can change the magnetic field just by uh, this uh, the, uh, elementary quanta uh, once you have fixed the lattice spacing. Uh, this is a uh important to consider because later on i will uh, discuss that our results that i will show you later on are obtained uh, uh, for a fixed values of the lattice spacing i mean the reason is that uh, if you want to make numerical simulations uh, uh, at different temperatures which is uh, one thing that you want to do by uh, when you want to explore the qcd phase diagram uh, if you change also the lattice spacing, uh, uh, then since this B is integer, uh, you will not be able to keep the magnetic field fixed. So this is uh, one of the reasons uh, uh, why in our approach, the lattice spacing is, uh, uh, is kept fixed. So we change the temperature just by changing the number of lattice sites in the temporal direction. Now, there are several possible gauges, uh, of course, and uh, this is one possible uh, gauge choice uh, for the U1 variables that is shown uh, here, uh, which corresponds to the presence of a, a Dirac string somewhere, which is not uh, visible by, by quarks. There is also an ultraviolet limitation. I mean, you should consider that uh, uh, the way uh, quarks feel the presence of the magnetic field is by the, uh, let me call them the iron of bomb phases that they uh, experience uh, once they go around an elementary square of the lattice. Uh, of course, there is a, a minimum uh, explorable flux uh, because the, um, the plaquettes is uh, as a finite uh, extension. So uh, turning into uh, values of the magnetic field, it turns out the magnetic field must be limited to pi over a square, where uh, a is the, the lattice spacing. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, we have a question from Kirill uh, Kuslowski. Go ahead. Yes. 
please. Hi. Uh, sorry, just a cool, short question. So uh, you said that to keep uh, the letter spacing fixed, but how can you how can you actually check that that results are in the continuum limit, or how can you go into the continuum limit? Yeah, sorry, good question. Uh, uh, we keep them uh, the lattice spacing fixed for uh, uh, each uh, temperature run. I mean, uh, uh, we will consider three different sets of lattice spacing. For each lattice spacing, we change the temperature by changing the number of uh, uh, lattice size in the temporal direction. And then we mm -hmm. consider three different sets of lattice spacing to perform the continuum limit. And can you then also go for a fixed temperature uh, say, seeing that, that, that you're that basically, basically doing also continuum limit for a fixed temperature? Um, or how can you compare the different letter spacings then? Well, I, I will, uh, uh, we can extrapolate something. I mean, for instance, the critical temperature we can extrapolate because uh, I mean, it, from a one uh, temperature set, we extract, we extract the, the critical temperature. And mm -hmm. then we, we make an extrapolation. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, we can also perform a, an extrapolation at fixed temperature. But uh, for instance, we have two different lattice spacing, which is, which are uh, one is twice the other. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we have uh, some temperatures which are uh, present for uh, different values of the lattice spacing. But, okay. Uh, okay. I see. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, there is another question from yes, uh, Mark. Um, yeah, I just I, did you mean minimum explorable flux or maximum? Here at uh, the bottom of the slide, it says minimum. Yeah, it is the, the minimum explorable flux. I mean, uh, it, it is a minimum explorable flux which sets the maximum value of the magnetic field that you can uh, experience. Uh, some sense. So the, the once we have fixed the the, the magnetic field, uh, the minimum explorable flux is uh, uh, b times a square. So uh, this must be limited by by pi. Essentially, it cannot be larger than pi because uh, uh, it is a phase. And so uh, the minimum flux is uh, limited by pi, which means that uh, the magnetic field is limited by pi over a square. Is that clear? Um, I, okay. okay. Yeah, it's a uh, playing with words, but uh, okay. I hope the, the the concept is clear. That that is the strongest possible field. Yes. That's yeah, the strongest but... possible field. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he probably means that uh, the flux through the whole system is much bigger, but that's the minimum, the, the, the quantum of the flux that you have. It's, uh, yes, essentially, yes, yes. I mean, uh, um, if you explore magnetic fields which are larger than pi over squared, everything uh, gets periodic. I mean, uh, if QB is equal to two pi over a squared, is like having uh, no magnetic field because uh, each quark will pick a, a two pi phase going around the plaquette, which is uh, like having uh, no flux at all. Okay. Okay. It is, so it, it is like yeah. Larmor radius becomes smaller than lattice, that it falls yeah. through the lattice, so to say. Yes. Well, in some sense, the lattice spacing sets an ultraviolet uh, cutoff, and uh, mm -hmm. in general, which is uh, since QB is, uh, as they mentioned, two, uh, that sets uh, an ultraviolet cutoff, which is one over a square uh, on, uh, uh, from another point of view. I mean, Okay, so this is uh, the now I will go to uh, lattice results, past and uh, recent results, and this is uh, the, the outline of the results that I will show you. So uh, I will first re re review some results regarding uh, uh, the QCD uh, vacuum, in particular uh, uh, chiral and confining properties, um, and then uh, and also the the phase diagram, uh, and then I will. Uh, go to most uh, recent results regarding uh, first the uh, properties at zero temperature uh, in the large B limit, 
And then uh, new results that have been uh, obtained recently at uh, non-zero temperature uh, and which represent an update on the uh, QCD phase diagram. So let me uh, first review uh, previous results. Uh, this is a slide uh, um, which uh, summarizes uh, results regarding uh, magnetic catalysis. So magnetic catalysis has been checked uh, uh, in the past up to moderate values of EB. Uh, these are two pictures from two different studies. The first was obtained with uh, uh, in uh, the one on the left was obtained with uh, unimproved uh, um, dynamical quarks and with a, a heavy value of the pion mass, not physical one, and with two flavors. Um, you can see separately the uh, up and uh, uh, the quark. This is the uh, in this picture you can what is plotted is the difference of the quark condensate measured at non-zero magnetic field minus the quark condensate measured at uh, zero magnetic field. And the same quantity is plotted also on the, on the right from a different study. Uh, so the one on the left is with an improved staggered quartz. The one on the right uh, is another study obtained with the improved staggered fermions and the physical quark masses. And uh, basically the results are uh, uh, qualitatively uh, similar. Uh, just from a quantitative point of view, they are different, but uh, they fully confirm the presence of magnetic catalysis, which was observed also earlier in uh, pure gauge uh, theories, and uh, has been also uh, recently confirmed up to uh, values of EB uh, at three, of 3 GB squared uh, in, this, uh, in this study from uh, a couple of years, uh, one year ago. Uh, uh, so the, the general trend is that the increase of the quark condensate is quadratic for uh, uh, small values of magnetic field, and then it ties it to a, a linear increase, which is uh, uh, what you would expect from a, a lowest Landau level uh, uh, approximation in the limit that, where that, that is that is modulus of quark condensate, right? Uh, you don't count the sign of quark condensate. Uh, this so is the words, it's, quark condensate is increasing, and the quark condensate is increasing. Yes, so yes. you think of it as positive. Uh, it's, it's increasing in uh, when you define it as a, a positive. Yes, of course. Uh, when you go to the um, physical condensate, it, is a, it has a minus sign in front of it, but uh, this is a positive right from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it is, uh, it is increasing, yes. So this is a, instead a slide reviewing the results uh, about the effect on the uh, color confinement. Uh, now, these effects have been studied by looking at the uh, static quark anti quark potential in the presence of the background field. And here the question is uh, how the static quark anti quark potential changes uh, depending on the relative orientation between the uh, quark anti quark separation and the direction of the magnetic field, which is this uh, uh, angle uh, theta. And uh, you can see here the, uh, the static quark anti quark potential for different values of the uh, relative orientation going from uh, zero angle to a uh, uh, 90 degrees uh, angle. So from a longitudinal orientation to an orthogonal orientation with respect to the magnetic field. Uh, this is one example obtained for uh, it be uh, one GB squared uh, in the results from, uh, taken from, uh, from this paper. Uh, and you can see that the, the very clear effect is that uh, the, uh, the slope of the potential uh, uh, clearly increases uh, uh, as you increase the uh, theta, angle, this uh, angle uh, theta, which is uh, the relative orientation. So uh, the potential is uh, steeper when the quark anti quark separation is transverse to the magnetic field uh, instead of uh, longitudinal to it. This is more clearly visible uh, if you look at the, um, let me first discuss this uh, picture 
uh, below, when you look at the ratio of the sink tension uh, at the non-zero magnetic field divided by the sink tension at zero magnetic field, uh, and you consider separately the case where the separation is longitudinal, uh, which is the, are these points below, or transverse to the magnetic field. So you see that the, uh, the ratio quite sharply decreases as a function of EB. So the longitudinal uh, uh, sink tension seems to rapidly uh, vanish as a function of B, EB, while the transverse sink tension uh, seems to increase. Uh, it looks like it saturates at some point. Uh, let me say that these results were obtained in the, this study uh, from a continuum extrapolation uh, of results that were limited to values of EB, uh, which were up to one GB squared. So what you see here are uh, actually extrapolations to large magnetic field of results obtained in the continuum just for a value of EB limited to one GB squared. So from this picture, you would uh, uh, expect that at, at some point, the longitudinal sleep tension could actually vanish. And uh, the prediction in the paper was that it could vanish for values uh, of the order of four uh, GB squared. But it was just a prediction, which uh, now I, I will, uh, yes. Uh, there is the shaded band at the top and your data points seem to be completely outside. Is that band representing anything? That band is uh, the continuum extrapolation, while uh, the, this, uh, the points here are uh, points obtained at uh, just one value of the lattice spacing, which is this uh, value here, which was the, the smallest lattice spacing at that time that we had in the paper. So of course uh, they are uh, off the, the band because the band is obtained as an extrapolation of uh, other points that were present in the, in the paper that I, I'm not showing here. It's okay, thank you. So in that paper, we produced this figure just to see, uh, we could uh, make simulations at these very large values of EB uh, just on the smallest lattice spacing. So uh, in this region, we could not have any continuum extrapolation of results. We just had the, this, uh, uh, these points here. And uh, we could just compare the, how they were uh, related to the extrapolation for smaller fields, but uh, um, it was not so reliable, I mean, uh, as an extrapolation. And in the upper figure, you can see a, a counterpart of uh, all that. I mean, the, the profile of the color flux too, uh, which is influenced as well. I mean, uh, of course, if the sting tension uh, uh, changes, also the color flux too, we expect it is uh, influenced. And indeed, uh, the blue points, uh, you can see that are uh, much lower than the, the points at zero magnetic field. So the flux tube, uh, is suppressed by the presence of the magnetic field when the anti-quark separation is in longitudinal uh, direction. So of course, one open question from that study was, uh, is that really true that uh, uh, at some point the longitudinal string tension vanishes and we have sort of uh, anisotropic confinement? Uh, this was uh, an open question at that time. Uh, so now let me go to the to results concerning uh, the critical temperature. So in this case, the uh, first results were uh, not in agreement with each other. Uh, in, in the first exploratory study uh, that I performed with uh, Zlagato Mukherjee and Francesco Sanfilippo uh, more than 10 years ago, we obtained a, a slightly increasing behavior of TC as a function of EB. Uh, it was a very small increase. I mean, at the scale of uh, a few percent of increase in TC, but nevertheless, it was clearly increasing. Uh, and a later study, so a couple of years uh, later from the, uh, from the Budapest Wuppertal uh, group showed that uh, instead the, uh, the temperature decreases as a function of the magnetic field. Um, now, the differences in these two studies were, uh, there were difference from several points of view. I mean, uh, from one point of view, we were using a, a non-physical pion mass, uh, 200 MeV, while this study was performed with a physical uh, quark mass, but also we had uh, unimproved fermions and uh, a quite large value of the lattice space. 
so the decreasing behavior has been confirmed by later studies. And uh, another feature uh, clearly appearing was a, a substantial uh, strengthening of the transition. So uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, there is no real uh, transition, but, uh, but a crossover, but the crossover uh, turned out to be sharper and sharper as the magnetic field strength was increasing. Now, it is clear by now that the, the, uh, the, wrong, uh, the, the wrong fact in uh, our earlier studies was not the pion mass, but rather the uh, unimproved discretization and the large value of the lattice spacing. Indeed, later on, there have been uh, uh, two different studies uh, recently considering uh, QCD with the uh, improved staggered fermions and then improve the discretization, but considering uh, uh, different values of the pion masses, which are plotted here uh, at the side of these pictures, going from uh, 300 MeV up to 600 MeV. And uh, uh, the feature is always the same. I mean, the critical temperature uh, always decreases independently of how large is the pion mass, always decreases as a function of the uh, magnetic field. And also the transition strengthens. I mean, the quantity which is plotted uh, in these plots is the uh, normalized chiral susceptibility. You can see that the peak is uh, uh, higher and, uh, and sharper as increase the magnetic field. Um, so uh, since uh, as you increase the, the pion mass and the quark masses, uh, in some sense, you go towards pure gauge uh, dynamics. Uh, I would interpret this behavior as a manifestation of the fact that this uh, decreasing behavior of TC is uh, rather associated to an effect of the magnetic field on the, uh, on the confinement scale rather than on, uh, on, on, the, on the chiral condensate. Okay, but I, I will uh, now, uh, I will go to a more recent result. Uh, so more recent results have been obtained in, uh, in this paper by Gergo and Drolli in 2015. Uh, and uh, Gergo in this paper uh, went uh, up to uh, 3 uh, GB square for the magnetic field. And, uh, mm, and apart from that, he also studied uh, an effective uh, model, which is uh, uh, exact in the, uh, in the quenched uh, limit. And uh, the results are the following. I mean, that the, the decreasing behavior of this C continues uh, up to, down to this uh, very large magnetic field. And the prediction from an effective model was that at some point the, uh, the crossover should turn indeed into a first order transition at some critical point, uh, which must be of the order of uh, 10 uh, GB squared. Of course, this possible critical point is uh, uh, as important as the uh, critical end point, which is expected in the standard QCD phase diagram, uh, because uh, you may have a magnetic field of such strengths uh, during the cosmological uh, QCD phase transition, depending on what happened before, which is uh, uh, unknown. I mean, uh, what happened at the electroweak transition, depending on that, you may have uh, quite strong uh, uh, magnetic field uh, even during the uh, QCD crossover. And uh, if such magnetic fields are uh, such as large as uh, this scale, then uh, the QCD transition, the cosmological QCD transition could be uh, have taken place uh, as a first order transition. So uh, this is one of the uh, why it it is important to check the actual presence of this critical endpoint where the transition turns into a first order. Now, there have been uh, direct confirmations of this first order transition uh, in this study, but again, they have been obtained with an improved staggered quark. So with the same discretization leading to the increasing behavior of PC rather than uh, decreasing. So, uh, let me go to the updates, which is the last part of my talk. There are two questions uh, coming from, uh, from the previous results, essentially. The first re uh, question regards the physics at zero temperature. So uh, this effect on the uh, confinement properties 
uh, will lead for some critical magnetic field uh, at some new possible phase of QCD where maybe the confining properties get disrupted, some sort of anisotropic deconfinement uh, for magnetic fields above some scale. And then uh, what is the fate of the critical temperature for large magnetic fields? Uh, uh, is there uh, indeed uh, any uh, critical value of the magnetic field where the transition turns into a first order? Uh, so uh, recently we, we started some efforts in this direction, which are, uh, I mean, the results are contained in these uh, two recent papers. Uh, now, I will uh, skip the technical details, which are reported uh, below and uh, in the next few slides, but uh, I will skip these details because they are uh, technical, but if you have uh, questions, uh, we can uh, go into details maybe uh, later on. Now, the, the main uh, uh, things that I will say is that we explored uh, an F2 plus 1 QCD with the physical quark masses, and the two different values of the magnetic field, four GV squared and nine GV squared. Uh, in each case, we uh, adopted the two levels that improve uh, standard fermion uh, discretization with the semantic two level improved gauge action. And uh, for each of the two magnetic fields, we explored uh, three different lattice spacings. Uh, so this is the, the smallest one. Uh, and uh, uh, for each of these lattice spacing, then we explore different values of the temperature by changing the number of lattice sites in the temporal direction. Now, in all of our simulations, the special sites, the physical size, has been kept fixed around the uh, three fermi. Um, now, let me say that if we compare the uh, ultraviolet cutoff that we have of the magnetic field, which I showed you uh, before, uh, this 2 pi over a square uh, is around uh, 18 GV square for the largest lattice spacing that we explored. So we may expect right from the beginning that the, the largest magnetic field, 9 GV square, is already a sort of borderline. I mean, we expect that large cutoff effects must be present for this large magnetic field. And so we should be careful and check continuum extrapolation, which uh, as I will show you uh, is uh, indeed essential. So these are the technical details that I will skip. I mean, the definition of the partition function of the action and uh, of the observables. Let me just say that I will show you results for the normalized uh, chiral condensate, uh, which is obtained by subtracting uh, uh, the condensate at uh, zero temperature and magnetic field. And I will show you results for the disconnected uh, chiral susceptibility uh, for the purpose of uh, determining the order of the transition and uh, uh, results for the uh, strange work number uh, uh, susceptibility. So the second derivative with respect to the chemical potential, which are useful probes of the uh, crossover uh, transition uh, as useful as the chiral condensate concerning the, the uh, thermodynamics of the strongly interacting matter. And uh, I will also show you uh, results concerning the static quark anti quark potential, which are obtained as usual from the uh, Wilson loop uh, operator by extracting the static quark anti quark uh, potential. And uh, the color flux tube instead is obtained by studying uh, a connected correlator of the plaquette with the uh, Wilson loop. So, let me go to uh, results. The first result that I show you regard the zero temperature and regard the uh, the chiral condensate. So in the upper figure, uh, I show the the chiral condensate again. The difference between the chiral condensate at uh, uh, non-zero magnetic field minus the chiral condensate at zero magnetic field uh, for different values of the lattice spacing, actually of a squared, and for the two different magnetic fields. Uh, so you can clearly see that the dependence of the chiral condensate on the magnetic field is uh, uh, quite strong for the largest value of the magnetic field, and this is expected because this is the magnetic field where we expect the strongest cutoff uh, effects. Uh, they are so uh, important that uh, at the largest values of the lattice spacing, this point here, 
the chiral condensate at the largest magnetic field is uh, smaller than the chiral condensate at the uh, smaller magnetic field, which is uh, unnatural because of magnetic catalysis. But uh, once you extrapolate to the continuum, and uh, luckily enough, the uh, continuum corrections seem to be still of order a square. I mean, you can uh, perform a, a quite uh, good uh, fit with assuming uh, order a square corrections. You obtain uh, the, the the correct order of magnitude, and uh, what is the, the correct? Why it, uh, is it correct? It is correct because uh, when you put the continuum extrapolated results. Uh, compared to previous results in the literature, you see that the increase of the chiral condensate keeps uh, con uh, being uh, uh, linear in the magnetic field, as we expect in the large uh, magnetic field uh, uh, limit uh, based on the lowest Landau level approximation. So basically, we see that the, uh, the cutoff effects are large, but they are under control and we can perform continuum uh, extrapolations. Um, let me go now to confinement. So uh, again, at zero temperature, but uh, the, how the, the sink tension uh, uh, changes. And um, okay, this is uh, the static work anti-work potential just for uh, one value of the lattice spacing, but uh, the most important picture is uh, the one uh, on the bottom. And uh, this is again the ratio of the sink tension uh, the by, uh, at non-zero magnetic field divided by the sink tension at zero magnetic field uh, for the longitudinal uh, and for the transverse direction. So in the transverse direction, uh, it is confirmed, and these are continuum extrapolated results. I mean, I'm not showing you the continuum extrapolations, which is reported in, in, uh, in the paper. Uh, I just show you the, the final picture containing uh, continuum extrapolations. And you can see that the continuum extrapolation are still uh, non-zero, uh, even at nine GB squared. So it seems that uh, up to this large value of the magnetic field, uh, we do not see any uh, dramatic uh, change. I mean, any change of phase uh, at zero temperature as a function of the magnetic field, but uh, uh, the physics is still uh, confining, even with uh, a huge difference between the uh, longitudinal and uh, transverse sink tension, a difference which is more than one order of magnitude. But still, you don't have any evidence of sort of uh, anisotropic deconfinement where the sink tension actually vanishes uh, in the longitudinal direction. Next, let me go to finite temperature. Uh, so uh, let me start with the, a picture showing the, the chiral condensate. Uh, and let me remind you that in this case, the temperature is changed by changing the number of lattice spacing. So for each value of the lattice spacing, we still have three different sets of lattice spacing, but for each value of the lattice spacing, we change the temperature by changing uh, the number of lattice size in the temporal direction. Uh, in this way, the magnetic field strength is kept fixed because uh, everything is unchanged regarding the spatial sites and so the uh, magnetic field quantization. And uh, in this picture, uh, uh, I report the results, for instance, for 4 GB squared of the chiral condensate. Uh, here it is divided by the, the chiral condensate at zero temperature, and that uh, kills most of the uh, finite cutoff effects. Uh, but you can see clearly that there is a, still a crossover of this uh, uh, magnetic field uh, where the chiral condensate drops. Uh, and uh, by fitting the point where uh, the, the steepest descent point, uh, we can uh, uh, estimate that the critical temperature is of the order of 100, 100 MeV. And uh, when we do the same for 9 GB squared, uh, the, the new fact is that the, the smooth crossover here seems to have turned into a, a first order transition because we see clearly a gap here. There is a, a big jump in the chiral condensate at the transition. And uh, moreover, the transition is, uh, uh, takes place to much lower temperature, uh, approaching uh, 70 uh, MeV, which is a, a quite low temperature. The same results are obtained uh, when you look at the um, strange cork number susceptibility. Uh, basically, you obtain the same estimate of the of the crossover or of the uh, of 
of the, of the critical temperature where you see the jump, everything takes place at the same place for the uh, quark number susceptibility. This is the strange quark number susceptibility, actually. Um, and this is the continuum extrapolation of the critical temperature. Uh, so the critical temperature for uh, 4 GV squared and 9 GV squared as a function of lattice spacing. Now you can see that uh, actually for 9 GV squared, we have results just for two lattice spacing. Uh, the reason is that uh, as we uh, decrease the lattice spacing, uh, you see that there is a general trend for the critical temperature to decrease as a function of the lattice spacing. And uh, uh, now the, the point is that uh, for the finest lattice spacing, the temperature was so low that we could not reach uh, the critical temperature by changing the number of lattice spacing in the temporal direction, uh, keeping a reasonably uh, finite temperature lattice. I mean, uh, at some point, uh, the, the temporal extension was comparable with the spatial size. So it could not be considered reasonably a finite temperature lattice. So we decided not to quote uh, any number here. So we have just to lattice spacing for the uh, largest magnetic field. And uh, this is a, a continuum extrapolation, but uh, uh, with quote and quote, I mean, uh, because it's not really an extrapolation because we have just to lattice spacing in this case, but it seems quite smooth. I mean, so it is uh, in some sense reliable. I ask a qualitative question. Yes. It, it is actually for previous slide better. It, it, is it true that there is a phase transition in critical, uh, it becomes first order, but it is not chiral symmetry restoration. The condensate is not zero on both sides. The, yes. Are you saying that? Yeah, that, for example, on this plot, right? It, it clearly not jump to zero. Yes, you're right. I mean, one should uh, one should do in this case. It could be that the the first order transition uh, is not uh, completely chiral uh, restoring. I mean, uh, yeah, okay, that's important. It it could be related just to confinement dynamics. Another point is that actually what one should do, but uh, it is uh, from a numerical point of view, it is a nightmare. Uh, one should uh, consider the chiral condensate here and extrapolate to zero quark mass in order to check if actually chiral symmetry is actually restored. So one should, uh, the, the, the right question should be, uh, is the chiral condensate here, uh, goes, does the chiral condensate goes to zero when you extrapolate to yeah. zero quark mass? And uh, and from a medical point of view, of course, this uh, will require maybe at least one order of magnitude more power in terms of, uh, of the mass is power. pretty small, right? It is physical quark mass. The, the mass is pretty small. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. So you, one could try an extrapolation, maybe considering also maybe considering higher masses and slightly lower masses, and try an yeah, extrapolation. But if this you is a, do better. You can always do worse. Yes. Yeah, this is a this is a good question. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So uh, this is a a summary or a first summary of the updated phase diagram. Uh, these are the old results uh, up to here, and these are the new two the two new points that we added to the phase diagram. So. Uh, this dotted line was uh, an extrapolation based on the effective model studied uh, in, uh, in, in this paper by Gregor and Rodi. And uh, the main observations are that the, the critical temperature continues to decrease steadily uh, so that one could uh, ask the question whether he, at some point it, uh, it's the ground somewhere. I mean, I will discuss later on on this question, and um, and it seems that an NGV square the transition is first order. Now, actually, what we have seen is just a, a jump, but it is a jump between two uh, two different temperatures, which are uh, distant to a few MeV from uh, uh, each other, and the reason is that. As I told you, we can change the temperature just in step of one over nt. So we uh, we can change the temperature not continuously, but 
this quanta because we keep the uh, lattice spacing fixed. So in order to check whether a transition is really first order, one needs to perform a, a careful uh, uh, finance scaling analysis, which requires to get close to the critical point, actually close and, uh, uh, and explore the, the critical region around the, the, the critical point. So what we decided to do in order to do that is to, um, to relax this condition of being uh, with a fixed value of the lattice spacing and on the physical line, so with fixed values of the quark masses. And uh, so we decided to, um, instead to just for the purpose of studying the order of the phase transition, we decided to, uh, to give up uh, uh, staying at fixed cutoff and uh, at fixed uh, uh, physical pion mass. And we kept fixed the bell quark masses uh, and uh, just changed the inverse gauge coupling uh, beta uh, to make a fine tuning of the temperature and uh, uh, be able to get right on the critical point. Uh, now, this is irrelevant, of course, the fact that we get uh, out of the physical line is relevant in order to decide whether there is a first order transition around that. I mean, if there is a first order transition uh, on the physical line, there will be some first order surface around there. And so if you, even if you move uh, a bit away from the physical line uh, and you cross a first order uh, transition somewhere else, there will be a first order uh, surface uh, also uh, around there, which confirms the fact that uh, the jump is associated to a, a first order transition. Uh, so this is what we did uh, uh, in this picture. Uh, this is why you see beta here and not the temperature because we are just changing the, the gauge coupling. And you can see in this case, we explored, of course, three different uh, lattice sizes, uh, special sizes, in order to explore whether there is a scaling uh, uh, in agreement with the first order transition, which is the, uh, the one uh, the, the expected one is uh, the, the relevant finance scaling for first order transition is the following with the effective critical indices uh, one over three and uh, uh, and one for the uh, for the susceptibility for the chiral susceptibility uh, and you can see that indeed the finance scaling answers works uh, quite well which confirms that the transition there is uh, uh, first order so. Uh, actually, there are uh, maybe more uh, uh, evident smoking guns for the first order transition, which are obtained by looking at the um, Monte Carlo histories of uh, observables like the, the core condensate, but even uh, the, the plaquette, so, so the action density, uh, which is uh, clearly double peaked for uh, moderate uh, special sizes. But uh, if you increase the, the special size, uh, you even uh, have metastable uh, runs, uh, which uh, have exactly the same parameters, starts from different phases uh, and uh, keeps staying uh, in the two different phases for a very long time. I mean, we, then we stop the run because uh, these two runs uh, were uh, on for uh, a few months uh, on the machine. and. Uh, they keep staying uh, in the two different phases. So these are uh, maybe the, the strongest, the, the more clear smoking gun for the first order uh, transition. Uh, now, what about uh, confinement? Uh, uh, we were not able to actually study confinement uh, on the two different uh, sides of the transition at the same point. Um, what we did, uh, which is uh, a preliminary results, is to study confinement uh, uh, on two different sides of the transitions. So let, let me show you back the, the, this preliminary phase diagram. We performed uh, essentially simulations uh, in this point here, which will be uh, confined, and in this point here, which will be the confined. Uh, and uh, the results that I will show you for the tension are uh, indeed the, the, the following. Uh, what we see is that uh, uh, in the confined phase, we, I mean the, 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 the standard the low temperature phase, the, the quark anti-quark potential is still uh, consistent with the uh, confinement, uh, even if uh, anisotropic, with the string tension, which uh, is, uh, is larger 
than usual in the transverse direction and uh, lower than usual, but uh, it is still there uh, in the longitudinal direction. Now when we move to the deconfined phase, uh, so still 86 MeV, but uh, at this large value of the magnetic field, um, what we can say within errors is that uh, results are compatible with the confinement. I mean, if you fit, uh, the, if you try to a best fit with the Cornell potential where you set the steam tension to zero, the, the chi square is uh, acceptable. Uh, even if the, it is not excluded, the distinct tension is, uh, is still there, but small, uh, within errors, we cannot uh, still uh, state this exactly. Uh, but the results are compatible with uh, also with the, the confine. Um, so the, I mean, the, what appears from that is that uh, the, at least for these two points, but uh, the, the question needs to be uh, explored more deeply. Uh, we are still in a confined phase up to here. And when we cross to the uh, high temperature phase, uh, it seems that we go into a the confined phase. So the confining properties uh, strongly change crossing this uh, line. So, let me go to the to the conclusion. So this is uh, the last but one slide. Uh, so this is a, the, the updated uh, phase diagram that we propose. Uh, it, it is a phase diagram where the critical temperature uh, continues to decrease at least up to this point. And where we know that there is some critical end point, uh, which we can predict now it is located between four GB squared and nine GB squared uh, somewhere. Uh, in terms of temperature, it is between uh, 6, 5, 65 MeV and uh, 95 uh, MeV. Um, the transitions uh, at large magnetic field seems to be uh, the confining, at least within uh, errors. And uh, now what happens beyond this point, uh, it is uh, unknown. I mean, uh, we put a, a question mark here because we don't know uh, what should be expected. I mean, there are several possibilities, of course, which uh, uh, can go from uh, this, uh, the critical line hitting the ground somewhere, at some critical uh, uh, magnetic field, uh, to the critical line uh, maybe uh, going to zero, but uh, to infinity here, uh, or saturating at some point. Now, uh, it is. Uh, one should say that uh, maybe uh, it is unlikely that there is such large scale uh, at zero temperature where something happens here. So uh, why 20 GV squared? Uh, why there should be such scale in, in QCD? Uh, so maybe it is more likely that the, the critical line simply continues decreasing uh, and uh, vanishes uh, asymptotically. But one should uh, uh, explore uh, also numerically this uh, issue. And uh, finally, let me conclude with a, a perspective uh, for, the, for the future. Of course, the, the critical endpoint uh, could be extremely interesting, as I already said, for the physics of the early universe uh, in particular, but also um, uh, it could also influence with this critical uh, behavior physics also for smaller uh, uh, values of the magnetic fields. And of course, one, uh, um, one goal for the future is to locate it more precisely. Um, and uh, apart from that, I mean, from locating any critical endpoint, one should explore uh, with much uh, better accuracy what are the properties of the metastable phases so regarding several aspects like uh, confinement, but also uh, transport properties, for instance, the, there has uh, been a study, uh, recent study showing that the electric conductivity uh, is strongly influenced by the presence of a magnetic field uh, for small fields. So what will happen to the electric conductivity, for instance, at such strong magnetic field and uh, what is the jump in electric conductivity as you cross the transition? or other questions uh, like that that can be uh, explored by lattice simulations. Uh, and finally, one also would like to better explore the uh, vacuum uh, 
structure by going to even larger magnetic field, but that will require, of course, even smaller lattice spacing. So it is something which is left uh, for the future. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. And uh, well, thank you very much for a nice talk. Uh, now we'll have some time for questions. So if anyone has questions, please uh, use the raise hand feature and we will go in the order of those hands. Okay, let, uh, let me see. I don't see any hands yet. So let me start with a simple question oh, of my own and then, and then we will uh, see how it goes. Um, so um, very simple question. Uh, you did say that uh, you were trying to do this uh, confinement study, but not quite properly. So uh, the basic question is, what prevented you from studying the Polikov group uh, more carefully in this model? Yeah, a good question. I mean, uh, the point is that uh, in um, because of the uh, quite low temperature that uh, we have to reach, uh, the number of uh, and also because of the small lattice spacing that we need to explore because to to avoid the uh, lattice artifacts, the number of lattice sites in the temporal direction is uh, quite large compared to standard uh, simulations. For for instance, in this case, and this is a uh, one of the best case, the number of lattice sites is uh, in temporal direction is 20. Now, in this situation, the, uh, the polio, we, we tried, of course, to look at the polio of flu, but it is uh, very, very noisy. So essentially, most that you see is, uh, is noise because they are uh, multiplying the several uh, SU3 variables. And uh, once you do that, you are adding the noise on noise on uh, noise and uh, and finally the signal is uh, uh, is very low but this is why uh, we could not uh, study the quark anti quark potential uh, by looking at polyp of loop correlators and uh, we decided to study the Wilson loop which is uh, unusual for finite temperature simulations Usually, uh, the, the standard rule is that when you are at a finite temperature, you should not use the Wilson loop uh, because the Wilson loop is to be used at, uh, at zero temperature. But actually, we could not make use of the polyphoph loop because of this uh, uh, noise. And on the other hand, we considered that, um, for instance, this study, uh, I didn't report here the, the lattice size, but this study was uh, this the measurement was done on a 48 cube times uh, 40 lattice, uh, corresponding to this low temperature 86 uh, MeV. Uh, we consider that it is almost zero temperature in the sense that the temporal extension is quite uh, large. So uh, the reason why you cannot study the Wilson loop, uh, cannot make use of the Wilson loop at finite temperature is that uh, uh, when you study the Wilson loop, let me um, let me go back to the okay to this picture. When you try to extract the quark anti quark potential from Wilson loops, what you do is to consider the ratio of Wilson loops uh, with different uh, time extensions. Uh, you study this uh, the logarithm of the ratio to two Wilson loops with the two different time extensions, and from the large time limit of this ratio. Or this logarithm of the ratio, uh, you extract the, the potential, which is an asymptotic behavior uh, in uh, equilibrium time uh, extension. So at zero temperature, uh, this is an example of the extraction. You can clearly see this plateau. So mm -hmm. uh, the real question is, uh, are you able to see uh, this plateau uh, on a finite temperature lattice? It depends on the temperature, of course. And uh, in this case, uh, in this case, we could see a clear plateau approaching, even if we are at a temperature, but the temporal extent was large enough to, or at least the, the, the plateau was clearly visible. Uh, okay. Now, we also tried the same, which was a, a more uh, interesting question. We also tried the, the same study uh, for these two metastable runs. I mean, this was the first question, but uh, uh, honestly speaking, I mean, uh, we tried this, but in this case, the plateau in the Wilson loop were not clearly visible. So we could not make uh, a statement on that. 
And this is the reason why the, uh, we don't have results right on the phase transition there, which would have been uh, more interesting from a physical point of view. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, the next question, I think, I don't know which order it appeared. I think Edward was first, so uh, go ahead. Okay. Thanks. I, I basically ask a variant of a question which I already asked. So it looks like confinement transition and uh, chiral transition become two different ones, right? That what you observe as first order is the confinement to which you have evidence, but the chiral condensate will disappear at higher B, perhaps, if at all, right? Uh, well, again, uh, if we go. Uh, again, well, one should uh, perform a, a chiral extrapolation of this, uh, of this data. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I remember. Uh, uh, mm, I remember. In principle, it could be two different places, right? It, it could be. It is very yeah. strong first order transition. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But now I ask a different one. So you you go from physical uh, one away, and you have shown that uh, it, it is deconfined. Yes. Yes. Then you can also can say what about chiral symmetry on that run. Which was some some move away, right? Yeah, yeah. You sure, mean sure. on these runs here? On on these runs here, you can also measure fiber Q, right? Yeah, indeed. I, I can show you the. I can reconstruct from this um, result. So basically, the, the point is the the, the point at uh, eighty six and B. So uh, at nine GB square, the chiral condensate is uh, this one. Basically, I while see, but, uh, but you are uh, saying uh, you, you are not sure whether it is proportional to quark mass or not, right? In other words, mm. whether it is a real chiral restoration or just proportional to quark mass. In yeah, but, but whether it is due to explicit of, violation of chiral dependence on the quark mass, yeah, we don't have yes. Mm -hmm. We are just one yeah, maybe mass. you can do. <laughs> Uh, larger yes. mass and see what that is. Yes, no, I remember but, in this respect. I remember the a study by uh, by Fritz of uh, Karsh when uh, they, it was the, the, the paper where they study QCD with the joint fermions where the, the two transitions split. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there is a need a splitting between uh, chiral, sim, chiral respiration and, uh, and the confinement. And I remember uh, in that paper that. Uh, in order to really state that the, there is a the, the chiral transition is there, they had to perform this uh, chiral extrapolation. I mean to to prove right. that indeed there was chiral symmetry restoration uh, and still uh, the confinement in that case and, and still confinement in that case. In that uh, case, there so was very big difference between two TCs. It right? was a very big difference. Yes. So uh, yeah. Uh, now indeed. it's kind of yeah. It is kind of principal question whether. Uh, yeah. The mechanism of both phenomena are related or not related. Okay, yep. um, let's move on to the next question. Uh, Kirill, uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much for the very, very nice talk. Um, I have actually a question, of, again, um, a little bit elaborating on, on what, what Edward was asking. So, uh, but I am more into the anisotropy of confinement. Um, so is, is there still a chance that there is a phase where you have, for instance, sigma t being unequal to zero and, and the other one, or, or differently, that, that you have um, a phase transition in the one and no phase transition in the other? So can the, those kind of phases still be there with your data? Uh, you mean this picture? I mean, if we go yeah. uh, to even larger magnetic fields, what yeah. happens? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, 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 starting, uh, the starting reason for, uh, for doing this study was actually to see, to see this. I mean, that, mm, we had, I mean, in this picture, you can see the, this was the extrapolation from the previous paper of the 2014, uh, which was pointing to a vanishing scene tension uh, around here. Uh, so, the reason why we uh, we chose these two values of magnetic field was okay. Four GB square 
maybe is uh, at the critical magnetic field and uh, 9 GB square will be surely much larger. So we will see. But this is uh, t equals zero. This is t equals zero, yes. Yeah. Your question was about... Uh... Right. Ah, okay. So, so Kirill is kind of asking what happened with the other points, with, with the other direction. Right, if I understand you correctly. I mean, you have here both directions, sigma t and sigma l, basically, right? Yeah, right. And, so um, one of them go to zero, and the other, you ask, what happened to the other, right? The other saturates, yes. The other saturates the other around the 50% of the zero magnetic field value. So which basically means that you have, uh, that you can have basically, um, well, a, a partially deconfined matter state from maybe mm -hmm. well um let, let, sorry let me interject here i believe from theoretical grounds you do not expect sigma l to go exactly to zero at any point it is expected to go very very low and i don't even know if it's possible that one of them goes exactly to zero mm. at zero temperature exactly zero temperature the, the reasoning is kind of simple that uh, this effective model was uh, addressing that we uh, kind of discussed with Volodymyrovsky. And when you go to extremely large field, you have this huge anisotropy. But anyway, there is always apparently far, far infrared region where some sort of confinement seemed to be necessary. Mm -hmm. so, so which is, which is on perturbative grounds. Basically, uh, it's essentially nearly perturbative grounds, but it's non-perturbative truly because, in fact, you have yes. the gluo dynamics decoupling in the far, far infrared. Right. It, this so is basically gluo kind dynamics of a... is still non-perturbative. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, I had kind of. Uh, very simple clarifying question. When you were talking the application of this possible first order phase transition in the stromagnetic field to the early universe, I might have missed something or uh, misunderstood. Uh, the very, very strong magnetic field that you were talking about happens also at very, very large temperatures, which doesn't seem to be the QCD critical temperature. So will it have any yeah, truly yeah. relevance to early universe? Yeah, yeah, of course, the question is whether the, the magnetic field will keep so large even at the QCD scale. Uh, maybe not. Uh, yeah. Because generically, when they talk about that super strong magnetic field, it happens much yeah. earlier at high temperature before the expansion still uh, was happening down to such a low as QCD temperature. And I believe yeah. the magnetic field will get much weaker with the expansion. So yeah, yeah. there is no yeah. chance to stay yeah. so high. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very complicated issue of this magnetic cascade, uh, turbulent cascade. What happened with that magnetic field after electronic? There are specialists yeah, but no, in this subject, yes. Yeah, but no matter how, what happened, even if there is this inverse cascades and everything, it seems like uh, that super huge magnetic field on the order of 10 to 20 Teslas, it no, will be rapidly decreasing with the yes. expansion. Yes. The question is what remains. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah. remains. Yes. And whether that, what we observe true. today between galaxies is uh, due to that or not. This is open question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. Any other questions before we wrap this up? Um, well, uh, since uh, there is no immediate question right away, I would like to use this opportunity to thank Massimo again for a very nice presentation.